Hey everyone, welcome back to the Boito channel. It's your boy Chad, and this is finally my list of my favorite albums of 2019. It's quite late, but as they say, better late than pregnant. So uh, this list has 33 entries because this time I decided to rank, rate uh, the albums not only by how much I enjoyed listening to them, but also by replayability. Because I figured it was no use putting an album on the list if I didn't want to listen to it again after making the list. So um, this is 33 albums that I really, really liked. And I'm sure that I'm going to listen to them again and again because I already have. So let's start by the bottom. Trust in the life force of the Deep Mystery by The Comet is Coming. It's an interesting album. It's kind of like new jazz, but mixed with a little space rock. Uh, it reminded me of uh, STS-9. I don't know if you know them. They're pretty underrated. But yeah, it's that kind of music. It's a little bit of acid jazz uh, and um, it's a little bit of like um, electronic but basically it's a really good new jazz album and there's a surprising featuring by Kate Tempest that when I first uh, listened to the album I, I was not expecting it, it kind of hit me like a curveball. Uh, next is Air Ni Ni by Hakushi Hasegawa. It's interesting, it's very Japanese, uh, but also it's uh, like very Japanese inspired by the lot of um, Afro-Cuban music, salsa, bossa nova, um, big band jazz, but with a lot of surprises. Um, like it starts, the first song starts kind of like one of these, um, you know, Frank Sinatra, big band uh, crooner stuff. But there are a few chords that come on and on that are completely chromatic and, and, and you know, they kind of like surprise you and the album gets a little bit weirder and weirder um, and, and it's really interesting. If you had put this album and told me that this is the soundtrack of the new Sonic game, I wouldn't even have questioned it. So it sounds kind of like Sonic music. Let's go to the next one, The All Devouring by Son. Uh, I saw someone describe this album as cookie cutter atmospheric black metal. And yeah, that's kind of what it is. It's well made, so I'm not going to complain. It's no sunbather, but it's nice. It's nice to listen to if you like atmospheric black metal. Uh, next is Pitfalls by Leprous. So it's, uh, I hadn't listened to Leprous in many, many years, and in my memory, they made like some kind of progressive metal, and this is not it. This is very different to what I remember. Um, but but it's, it's interesting. It's like uh, kind of like alternative pop rock. Uh, it, like, you know, reminded me vaguely of Radiohead. There's a lot of um, common similarities with, with Radiohead. It was a little difficult to get used to the singer's voice because he really sounds like Kermit the Frog from the Muppets. I don't really understand what the fuck the drummer is doing half of the time. Sounds like he's uh, really trying to be subtle, but uh, too much. There's, su there's um, such a thing as too much subtlety. Next is uh, When We Are Inhuman by Bonnie Prince Billy with Bryce Dessner and Eighth. Blackbird. So it's a kind of old American folk music from a uh, hundred years ago. Remember the theme song from Bioshock Infinite called uh, Will the Circle Be Unbroken? It's really that kind of music. And I would not be surprised if uh, these uh, musicians have been inspired by uh, Chris Dial, for example, or even people like Bon Iver, Sufjan Stevens, or Owen Pellet. Um, it's, um, yeah, it's modern indie folk uh, that is really inspired by old folk music, especially from the US, and with a modern sound, kind of, and it really works, in my opinion. The next is Inside the Rose by These New Puritans. This album is probably what Depeche Mode would have sounded like if they had been produced by Trent Reznor. It's, um... New Wave, Dark Wave, um, Alternative Pop, and it's uh, it's a really elegant album, really sophisticated, 
Uh, the, the, the sound is great, the, um, the melody is pretty good, the singing is good. Really, it's, uh, if you like new wave or dark wave, uh, this is really a, a, a great album. There's not a lot of good dark wave uh, released recently. Next is Agora by Fennis. Um, there are two kinds of ambient music. There's the one that is kind of like background music that you can listen to while you're working or maybe meditating or stuff like that. And there's also the, the ambient that is right in your face that requires your attention that you have to listen to actively. This is the latter. Um, this is a very hot ambient. If you like Tim Hacker, for example, you probably love this album. Next is The Cosmo Cleaners by Uranium Club. This album really, really reminded me of Double Nickels on the Dime by The Minutemen, and also the late 80s albums of the Red Hot Chili Peppers, especially Mother's Milk. Um, it is, yeah, punk, funk, it's very fun, playful, dynamic. Next is The Zeal by King's Kaleidoscope. It's, um, the lyrics are very preachy and uh, kind of ham-fisted, and, you know, you're gonna have to get used to that if you want to appreciate this album. But it's, it's a great blend of so many genres. Um, there are really interesting chord progressions. And, um, yeah, it's, there's a little bit of everything. There's a little bit of rock, rap, electronic, jazz. And, and uh, it, it's well made. It's a really good um, melting pot of modern music, I'd say. Next is uh, There Existed an Addiction to Blood by clipping. Not a lot of great uh, hip-hop and rap releases lately. Uh, even the, the latest uh, Death Grips albums have um, been underwhelming in my opinion. There's this guy called JPEG Mafia who releases really good stuff. And there's also Clipping, uh, which made a, a really good album. The, one of the best rap albums I've heard in a while. And it is really interesting the way it's made uh, it's really original and fresh with a lot of uh you know minimalist bits and uh it's uh kind of the, the lyrics are kind of like um you know narrating a horror movie or something like this it's uh, it's a really really good album next is veil of imagination by wilderun uh so they do sound quite a lot like opeth especially uh, Blackwater Park era it is um, it is modern prog metal uh, with a little symphonic aspect that I didn't really like. It, it kind of sounds like Alpeth jamming with a jo orchestra of John Williams, you know, and um, it's a little bit too um, Lydian for me, but it is nice there's some great riffs just a little bit too cheesy in my opinion if it was less uh, cheesy it would have been higher up it, it was kind of a trend this year there's been a lot of prog albums that have been released and a lot of them were like really cheesy next is caligula by lingua ignota um this was a tiny bit of a disappointment because i really really loved all bitches die and this album is not quite as good uh, but it's it's good. It's really good. Uh, still, um, because, yeah, Lingua Ignata is so good. It kind of feels a little all over the place, but there's a lot of great elements. And, um, yeah, I'd say it's maybe a bit too long. The, the songs would have been better if they were shorter, probably, uh, in my opinion. But, but yeah, it's, it's really good. It's, it's got all the signature stuff, the, the noise, the, the alternative singer-songwriter stuff, the the experimental aspect. It is, a, it is a really good release. Next is The Cocoon by Richard Henschel. Uh, that's also is interesting and uh, it's also a prog metal album and it's also uh, really cheesy uh, but you know not unbearably cheesy. Um, it's, hmm, it's a little bit Zappa-esque uh, in the way the songs are constructed. Overall, it, it sounds a little bit uh, like Dream Theater, but not too much. And um, yeah, it's it's fun, a little bouncy and playful, uh, modern prog metal or prog rock. It's like kind of in between rock and metal. 
Uh, there's some really fat guitars, but it's not really metal. Anyway, next is Dyer's Hunt by Pedestrian Deposit. Uh, this is a harsh noise album, kinda, but also kinda ambient, and maybe a little droney. Uh, but yeah, it's it's another um, ambient album that is really in your face, and not really background music, but it's also, yeah, kinda meditative and maybe a little hypnotic. I really like how it sounds. Next is Jin by Lingua Nada. Uh, once again, I'm not really sure what genre is this. It's kind of like um, alternative electro rock, maybe. And it, re it reminds me a lot of Phoenix. Sounds a lot like Phoenix. Um, and a little bit too like the dismemberment plan. It's, it's really fun, playful, um, with a, a bunch of catchy tunes. Uh, it's quite original and fresh. Next is a Rave Till You Cry by Bogdan Radzinski. And, um, okay, let's be honest, sounds a lot like FX Twin, especially the Drugs album. Uh, so if you like IDM, uh, this is the best IDM album I have heard in a, in a while, in a few years. So uh, um, it's not really breakcore. Uh, but there's a few elements. Yeah, it's um, IDM is kind of a bullshit term, but you know, I hope it gets the point across. Next is The Nothing by Korn. I, w I didn't expect uh, the, uh, this album to be that good, and it was a nice surprise in my opinion. Um, it does sound a lot like stuff they have done in the past, especially around like. Uh, untouchables and take a look in the mirror uh, and uh, there are also elements from f earlier stuff that you can really uh, find it's kind of like you know th they uh, boiled down their music to a kind of uh, uh, formula but despite the fact that this album is formulaic it is not iterative uh, the songs are really good I, I really appreciated the overall album there is also a couple tracks when they uh, kind of get out of their comfort zone and experiment uh, with some stuff, which they've been doing a, a, a lot since the beginning anyway. But yeah, it's a Korn album that sounds like Korn, and Korn is, is doing some Korn, but they're doing it well. And uh, this album is really enjoyable from start to finish. A bunch of great songs in there. Next is Nest by Brutus. It's post-hardcore, basically but not exactly kind of kind of sounds like if at the drive-in had uh bjork on vocals vocals uh, also sound a lot like tillian pearson in my opinion singer from uh, uh dance gavin dance and uh uh fuck is it Circa Survive or Tides of Man I always get those confused anyway it's a really nice post-hardcore album definitely one of the best post-hardcore albums i've heard in years next is one voice by warforged ah this album kind of suffers from trying to do too many things at once and not really knowing what um direction it wants to go in kind of reminded me of uh, the most unwanted song by the People's Choice Music, you know, that uh, scientific experiment. And um, there's a bunch of stuff that happens that uh, surprise you. It's kind of like an album with jump scares. It can go from doom metal to suddenly a nice piano melody with some uh, sleigh bells in the background. And um, yeah, there are elements of so much stuff in there and a lot of them are really good and um, it uh, it made me really excited to see what the band is gonna release next if they learn how to make their music a little more coherent uh, this could be huge next is brain drops by tropical fuck storm a good surprise for me because i didn't really like their previous album a laughing death in mid space i think it was called 
And this album doesn't really sound like the other one, like the previous one. Uh, uh, it's, in my opinion, much better. Reminded me uh, of a lot of these um, Omar Rodriguez Lopez solo albums from about 10 years ago, like, you know, Xenofanes, Solar Gumbling, Los Sueños de Ujigado, uh, whatever else, you know. And uh, I really love Omar Rodriguez Lopez. It's uh, maybe my favorite musician of all times. So uh, if uh, these guys are going to imitate him, I am here uh, clapping and wanting more. Next on the list is Xie Xie by Seller. Um, this is an ambient album of the first kind, you know. It's background music-ish. And uh, it bridges the gap between ambient and field recording. So there's a lot of field recording stuff in there mixed with the ambient or used as interludes. And, and it, it, it's it's really, really nice. It's really contemplative, meditative, uh, dreamy, I would say. Next is Rammstein by Rammstein. Another big, good surprise for me. I did not expect the album to be that good. And now that I've listened to it a bunch of times, I think it's my favorite Rammstein album now. It uh, sounds like a lot of stuff they've done before but like improved and refined. You know, if you want to get into Neue Deutsche Härte, you could start there. Uh, it's It's got a, a lot of, you know, all the elements of the genre, a little bit industrial, uh, with uh, some Nine Inch Nail-ish songs. It has uh, some stuff that is more rock, some sort of that is more metal. They have some stuff that is kind of new wave, dark wave-ish. Uh, it's a great album, old killer, no filler, and um, I love it. Next, oh, I hesitated before uh, adding this one because it's an archive. It's live at the Paramount from Nirvana. I don't understand why it's released now, but uh, it's it's really, really good. It's um, out of all the Nirvana live albums I've listened to, this is probably the best one. Uh, it's uh, recorded, it was recorded in 1991 during the Nevermind uh, tour. Another live album was released at the same time, but it was uh, recorded in uh, 1993 uh, during the Inutero tour. But it does not sound quite as good. In fact, it sounds a lot perfunctory. This album does not. They're having fun on stage. They're playing a lot of great songs. Uh, some people have said, like, it's a cash grab from the label. Don't buy this. But I, I don't care because it's good. It's really good. Next is The Sacrificial Code by Kali Malone. Uh, it's... <laughs> it, I, don't, I don't really understand why I like this so much. It's just very slow, droney organ melodies it's just an organ and it's not it's not anything complicated it's very minimalist and um i don't understand why it works so well but it really does it is enthralling it is heady it is dreamy it is uh, one of the best ambient albums i've listened uh, not only recently but ever Next is Whipping Choir by Full of Hell. So this is a this is a pretty brutal album uh, in the best possible way. It's not just a mix of grindcore and black metal. Uh, it also has harsh noise in the mix. What's not to like? Next is Synthiosis by Waste of Space Orchestra. Psychedelic metal, I suppose. Um, it's uh, it reminded me. Yeah, it reminded me of a, a lot of a band that you've probably never heard of called Combat Astronomy, uh, and also a little bit of um, an underrated band uh, called Priapisme. It reminded me a lot of the band Magma. They don't really sound like Magma, but there's a lot of similarities in the way they make music, in my opinion, the way the songs are structured the way the, the instrument go on top of another. And um, it's a little bit hypnotic. It's a little proggy. It's a little sludgy. And it's all around really interesting and enjoyable alternative metal release. Next is Terraformer by Thank You Scientist. Another album that it's difficult to tell what genre it is. Maybe progressive ska. <laughs> it's really, really good. I 
did not expect to like um you know a progressive rock album with brass but it, it really works really well it's um it's it's fun to listen to you can tell that the guys are having fun but it's not just fun it's also well made yeah there are a few tracks in there especially in the middle that are really great really killer tracks uh son of a serpent everyday ghosts especially and um yeah it's a, it's a really original kind of music i cannot really think of any band that sounds like that it's a progressive rock uh, but with jazz saxophone uh, and it's it really fucking works it's groovy and fun but it also has a serious aspect it's really well made well crafted uh, love it next is there will be no intermission by amanda palmer another surprise i didn't like amanda palmer that much before uh, even she, even if uh, she was pretty good in the Dresden Dolls, but uh, yeah, this album is great. I was surprised by it, and I was surprised by how much I, I love it. Uh, the lyrics are great. The instrumentation is kind of like simple but really well made, and um, it's really really enjoyable. The only thing I don't like is like the little interludes between each track, I don't understand why they are there, it doesn't work in my opinion, but the, the, the songs are really, really good, it talks about a lot of subjects of daily life in a, in a really nice uh, way, it reminded me a lot of the TV show Louis, uh, it has the same tone, you know, and something that I really love. Next is 2020 by Richard Dawson. This is another band uh, or artist that blends a lot of different genres into something that is surprisingly coherent and solid and the lyrics are so good. This guy is a, is a lyricist, exceptional. It's, uh, he talks about stuff that is so like relatable and uh, he has a, an outlook on life that is uh, really, you know, I, I really vibe with it, and uh, to, in my opinion, this is what, what more pop music should be like this. It's uh, it's like the epitome of quality pop music. Next is a Die on Mars by the Carlos Dow Boys. A lot of bands have tried to sound like the Dillinger Escape Plan. I'm especially thinking about the number 12, Looks Like You, who released a very disappointing album this year, in my opinion. Uh, but this album, Die on Mars, uh, by the Callous Dow Boys, uh, sounds a lot like Dillinger, but better. Like, it's super enjoyable. Uh, you can tell they're ha having a lot of fun, but, but the melodies and the way the songs are written is really, really well made, really, it's really well crafted. There's some post-hardcore vibes in there, a little at the drive-in-ish, um, maybe a little glass show as well. Uh, and at third place, we have Lawns of Delight by Alan Moore. Um, it's very video gamey somehow. It reminded me especially of the Diablo soundtrack by Matt Wellman. Uh, also, it has, it has a strong Zelda vibe, especially Twilight Princess, and uh, it reminded me a little bit of Dark Souls. It reminded me also a lot of the Doom uh, by Mick Gordon um, soundtrack. Once again, it's a blend of a lot of stuff. There are some piano melodies that make me think of Tigran Hamasian, uh, but also there are some like really fat Meshuggah-esque guitars at some point. Uh, it is um, like the, the soundtrack from a, an extraordinary uh, video game, uh, hypothetically. It, it is very, very contemporary. Uh, if metamodernism was a genre of music, this is what it would sound like. Next is Arrival by Fire Orchestra. I've seen it labeled experimental big band, but not really in my opinion. It's an interesting term that I never heard before, but uh, yeah, it's kind of like jazz rock I suppose uh, and um, it's very chill um, but uh, it's uh, like a little a little hypnotic reminded me a lot of uh, Bitches Brew by Miles Davis and um, you know it, it has kind of a Zawinul-esque vibe to it in general 
Um, also, it sounded as, uh, a little like the Mars Volta. And um, yeah, it's like this is not really jazz, it's not really rock, it's in between. There's an incredible uh, cover of, uh, of a song by Chic. It's, it's really, really a big mood album. And uh, the winner is The Origin of My Depression by Uboa. Um, so, once again, I'll be honest, it sounds a lot like All Bitches Die by Lingua Ignota, but I don't care because I love All Bitches Die and the fact that this album sounds a lot like it's not a problem for me. It's like, you know, the, the better, the merrier, or whatever the expression is. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. It's um, alternative indie singer songwriter stuff but like quite experimental uh, with uh, aspects of harsh noise to modern classical and uh, the vocals are great even if uh, i didn't vibe with the lyrics uh i, I don't the, the, the lyrics are weird and uh, uh not very good in my opinion but the music is so good that i like overlooked this aspect um entirely it is very artistic very well made it feels like every detail has been like uh, thought uh, a lot about so uh, this is something I, I enjoy not always uh, but there I, I really do it is an extraordinary album and that was my top albums of 2019 if you have some questions remark or maybe suggestions don't hesitate to post in the comments and uh, in a few days or maybe weeks, I will also release a, a playlist of my favorite songs of the decade. But uh, yeah, uh, probably in quite a long time. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, there are links to everything I do in the comments or the description box, depending on where you watch. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and peace.